Last time, I complained about how much I hate this thing. In this video, we're gonna do something about it. We're gonna dive right into this build. We'll need a flexible half inch pipe connector, two ball bearing half inch pipe valves, some half inch uniseals, we're only gonna be using one for this project, but I got a whole bag cause they're really useful. We'll see these again on other projects around the farm. The last thing on the list are six poultry watering cups and the fittings we need to attach them to the pipe. I got 10 feet of half inch PVC, but we're gonna need less than five for this build. We're also going to need some PVC primer and glue to make sure it doesn't fall apart on us. For the main water container, we're going to need something food safe that can hold a lot of water. We're also going to need a lid. One that fits well. It doesn't have to be completely airtight, but we don't want mosquitoes laying eggs in the water. These are the tools we're going to need. A 6 inch circular saw with a blade reverse for cutting through PVC. And a drill with a hole cutter measuring 5 eighths of an inch. Thanks to the magic of audio editing, your eardrums aren't gonna explode right now. But if you're planning on doing what I'm doing, make sure you wear some air protection. After all the cutting, I did a test fit of all the pieces to make sure everything looked good. It did. The next step was getting everything glued together, and I learned a lot during this process. First, you probably don't need as much primer as you think you need. I'm honestly a little embarrassed by how that first piece turned out. But in life, there's no extra credit for perfection. Just personal satisfaction. I'll try to do better next time. And when it comes to the glue, same rules apply. You don't need a lot for a strong bond and a good seal. By around the middle of this process, I had my technique down. Things were looking pretty good. But because I never want to take it apart again, I had to pay pretty close attention to what I was doing. So after throwing together the last few pieces, we were on to the next step. This is thread seal tape, also called plumber's tape or air tape depending on where you buy it. I put a few layers of it over the chicken watering cups to make sure that our connections are leak proof. Using this stuff is gonna save us a lot of trouble down the line. And I'll be using it for all the projects on the farm with a threaded seal that needs to be water or airtight. Another headache reducer we're installing is this valve at the end of the manifold. It'll allow us to drain the system from inside the coop if we ever need to. I screwed these poultry watering cups in about quarter turn from their limit. And if we did everything correctly, the thread seal tape should fill in all the tiny gaps to make these connections completely watertight. I'm always looking for an excuse to use my knife, so that's what I use to clean up the edges of this hole. But sandpaper works just fine. I'll let you know exactly why we need some soon. But for now, just know that I had some canola oil on hand, so I threw some in a cup and went back outside. If you've never experienced uniseals before, I'm about to show you why I love them so much and why they're so very useful. These little magic things, with very little effort, turn a hole in any object into a watertight channel. 
this is only the beginning. I'm really looking forward to showcasing how we're going to use these on the farm. Now for those of you who were wondering what the oil was for, the wait is over. It's notoriously hard to install a uniseal with dry PVC. We're going to need some lubrication. You can use just about anything slippery for this, but since we want to make sure that this is food safe for the chickens, cooking oil or dish soap are pretty good options. I've used both in the past with pretty good results for this next step. If you're a particularly motivated farmer or gardener and you happen to be following along, there's something you should know. I make this look really easy, but it's not. It's normally such a struggle. I got pretty lucky here, so keep in mind if you're following along, your results may vary. This is the spot I chose for version 1 of the chicken watering tank. Eventually, we're gonna connect a bigger tank up to a system of rain gutters to make use of those torrential Florida rainstorms. But having this smaller tank hooked up is still gonna decrease our workload significantly. With the same drill bit I used to install the uniseals, we're gonna put a hole right through the hardware cloth for the manifold to pass through. And after doing that, we were almost done. We even had one of the more curious chickens stop by to check it out. I think that's a good sign. When I filled it up for the first time, I was pretty happy to see there were no leaks. And everything seemed to be working perfectly. Before turning this thing on for the first time, I wanted to make sure it was completely leak-proof, so I filled it up all the way to the brim. And that was it. We were done. We just had to check our work. And after turning it on, and taking a look inside the coop, there were no leaks. Next time, we'll find out what the chickens think. Hey guys, thanks for watching another episode. Things are gonna get a little crazy as we ramp up the farm. We'll be covering a lot of the normal farm stuff that you'll see on YouTube, from animal husbandry to gardening. But although I'm a farmer, I'm a scientist at heart. So we'll be doing a lot of experiments and building lots of things while learning some chemistry and physics along the way. If you have any questions about something specific, leave a comment. I read all of them. See you next time.